I believe this message that I have for you today, God has planted so it can reshape your thinking, your mind, expand your boundary and destroy every limitation of your life. I got this great powerful message. I want you to stay tuned and don't touch that down. This message is really going to impact your life in a marvelous way. Stay tuned. doesn't matter what color or creed you are as long as there is sin as long as there is evil spirits as long as there is man there would always be some level of manifestation of evilness One of the things we all can associate with, we understand that the the man that sat by the tomb, uh, that the legion had no power unless they had a vessel of which it could manifest its evil out of. Uh, So evil spirits cannot do anything unless you allow it to plague your life, to plague your heart, to plague your your mind and your soul. And when we look at the scripture metaphorically, we then realize that God is more concerned about us having a relationship with him more than having things of this world. Jesus found himself in a a peculiar place. He loved two sisters of the Bible. Now, if you go to a church and and the priest says God doesn't love women, then that's some priest or whoever that person may be. Uh, He has, uh, (laughs) he doesn't know what he's talking about. But Jesus loved Mary and he loved Martha. God loved his creation automatically. Whether you're black, you're white, you're Asian, American, or whatever creed or color you be, Jesus loved you as his creation. There is never a project of which I have worked on, and even if it's not perfect, If I create it, it makes me look at what I've done. Now, it may not be perfect. Uh, How many of you ever did um, art and craft? Uh, It may not be perfect. How many of you ever sold your first shirt or your first dress or, you know, you did something that, you know, you never did before, but when you did it, you felt proud that you were able to put your hands to something. And at the end of the day, what you had in mind of your creation, it either came out perfect or it came out semi-perfect, but nevertheless, you appreciate what you did. And so, in every praise that we give to God, he appreciated. it. One preacher put it this way, and I think it was, it was very powerful, that God has a problem with pride. He has such a problem with pride that he can't praise himself. So he has to create the creation to praise him. He has to create the angels to praise him. And then he says, In his word, if you don't praise him, raise up the rocks to cry out, to praise him. Now, that's powerful. That's why God, uh, he he, he hates pride. 
because he cannot even have pride himself within himself yeah he can't find pride within himself you don't know how and where it comes from uh, my god to dig it up in himself so he has to create that which uh, to praise him hallelujah glory to god most of the time when we do something good hallelujah you know sometimes we either want to praise ourselves or want somebody to praise us uh, but that's not even the core of this message this evening that I want to uh, digress in, amen, and hopefully able to give you some uh, chunks of the word, amen, as I won't be too long uh, before you. But if you could turn your Bibles to the book of Rome, Romans uh, chapter 8, and I'm going to be running right along to the verse 18, I was praying and my heart and talking to God last night. I said, Lord, what must I share with thy people? Amen. Amen. And, uh, and he spoke this uh, chapter in my spirit to share with you on this evening. And I just want to take out that time to share it with you. Amen. Amen. You know, it's never an easy road, but God look for willing vessels. Amen. Yes. He looks for willing vessels. Verse 18 said, For I reckon that the suffering, somebody said the suffering, suffering, of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now that's very uh, ironic and very unique because he says that the suffering that you are presently going through, it will not, all right, Glory to God. It will not uh, even be worthy or to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in you. So in other words, God says at this present time, you are going through some situations in your life. But what's about to be revealed in you? Oh my God, there is no present problem my God, that can compare to it. Uh, and I like that because in other words, God is saying, uh, get ready in spite of your challenge, in spite of, my God, all the problems that's coming in your life. I was reading a, 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 a story in the book, I think it was in the book of Isaiah, and it began to talk about God uh, uh, making, uh, what, what to say, rivers, uh, you know, in the in the you know the desert, amen, or in the dry place, and and how he's going to cause a bringing forth in the dry place, just metaphorically, or in the wilderness, he's going to cause you know stuff to start happening and come forth. And it was a prophetic word, and the children of Israel uh, took that word literally. Now, when I was listening to this particular documentary on last night i realized that israel only have they say about two percent rain within a year so they really don't have a massive rainy season and the parts where the iraqis are located they sit on the mass land that is uh they sit on oil springs and they have more control more land than israel one put it this way is that they said the country of israel the name if you put it on a map uh, the, the, the country of israel is so small that they can't even really put the name on a map there's no room because the name on a map will be bigger than the country and so when they said, when you look at the state of Israel, you're looking at a small state. You're looking at a small place. Now, with this little, small, tiny country, it seems to be the central focus of the entire world. It depends now, you know, that country, it sits like there is a big red uh, a switch. Amen. And it will determine what war is going to go forth in the land. Uh, you know, when you look at this situation here, we are looking in the sense that 
you know, God, uh, God, why don't you use the big thing, you know, to, uh, you know, I can understand stuff happening in big things, but why do the greater things happen in small things? And so the nation of Israel, they are the smallest, their country uh, is a harsh place. They don't have oil field. They don't have much of which they can trade with other countries about beside their olives and their, uh, their, their olive groves. And anyway, the Muslim country, they have uh, oil field that they can trade with and make money. But the, it, the story went that when Israel got into the country, the land was so dry. And they took the chapter in the word of God. One was sharing that they took the word of God literally that God will cause uh, their dry place to bring forth. And they begin to plant trees in the wilderness. They did not have uh, a, a certain uh, irrigation where they have water going through. They had to plant on faith. Adabasha. There wasn't a lot of rain to fall. So for their for their plants to grow, so they did research on what uh, plants, what kind of vegetation will do good in certain area. At the conclusion of the dry place, they were showing a massive picture of the great forest with hundreds and and, and even thousands of acreage of green land. Uh, because the nation of Israel has been planted ever since they, uh, my God, became a state. And they start planting in these dry places. And I was watching a documentary and the man says, well, I, I don't understand how this happened because you guys are not even watering this vegetation. And the man says, we plant on the word of the Lord. Adabasa. You know, that's what it is. We plant on the word of the Lord. It's not how it seems, but it's what the word of the Lord say. So they took it literally and they were showing how plush the land is, my father. Glory to God. How plush the land is. How the vegetation is growing wonderfully in the land. And how the cascade of the mountains are growing. But also, the Muslim people also hate and envy Israel uh, uh, based upon that they have food on their land my God Almighty and and the little piece that they got they think now that well they may have the best piece of land but it's not the best piece of land it's the grace hallelujah and the favor of God that is connected to those that loves him and fear him and to those that he has a covenant with. I realize my fellow believers when I look at my life. I realize that it's not the mass my God of which I, I, God had uh, blessed me with. That have me to uh, uh, accumulate any sort of uh, a wealth or live the way that I live. But I realize that once you are a servant of the most high God. Hallelujah. And you're walking faithfully and righteously. God is obligated to bless you in spite of what you are going through. Now, your situation may be dry at times. And you may cry because sowing is never easy. Anyone will tell you that, my fellow believers, glory to God. Uh, my God, if you ever try to, uh, you know, up north, we uh, would put like, uh, what, what to say, tomato trees. And we want to plant certain things. And then it require us to remove the top grass layer. And in order to plow up the ground so that we can literally plant, my God, seed in the, in the time of spring. So that we may receive or reap a harvest in the summer months. Amen. And so making a certain cultivation is not easy. It's a push. It's a, it's a fight. It's a struggle. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the end thereof, the glory to be revealed thereof, it's going to be far more greater. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Than that which you have to go through at the time of your challenge. At the time of your suffering. Amen. At the time of your struggle. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm talking about. Now the verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the create creature 
Is that right? Amen. Waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Here's a paradoxical view here. That God, the earth is waiting for us to come into what God promised us. The earth is waiting for us to walk into the blessing that God has for us. It's not what men say, but it's what God says. If our life lines up with God, the earth is willing to heal for us. It's the same, uh, my God, analogy I'm describing. That when the children of Israel decided they will sow in a dry place, the earth was always there, but it was waiting for them to sow Hallelujah, on that land. So God, we talk about having faith. Faith means that, my God, it's an action word. And an action word means that in order for the manifestation of God to take place, we must uh, move by faith. We must do by faith. We must believe by faith. We must walk by faith, talk by faith, live by faith. Amen. Glory to God. And the earth will heal for us. Ah, hallelujah. Glory to God. When the world look at you and they says, I don't understand how you are surviving. What they're what they're not seeing is who is covering you in the invisible realm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When the world look at you and says, I don't know how you haven't lost your mind yet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They can't see who in the invisible realm that's keeping your mind sound. And this is what I'm talking about, my fellow believers. Glory to God. You may, he says, oh, Jacob. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may be small right now, but you shall be called Israel, for you shall be a great nation and I know that your smallness will be challenged amen your smallness my God it will become a fight but when God puts you on a pedal stool when God sets you up when God blesses you when God favor your life when God open doors that no man can close when God show up for you ha, my God and your life begins to be my God prosperous then everyone that see my God would only say, my God, uh, when did this happen? The earth is waiting for the sons of God. He's waiting, the earth is waiting for our faith in God to manifest. For verse 20 says, for the creature was made, my God, subjected to vanity. Not willingly, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected my God Almighty, the same in hope. In other words, everything, my fellow believers, my God is subjected, my God, to vanity. Hallelujah. Glory to God because that's what God has commanded. Hallelujah. But anyway, my fellow believers, understand this. The hope, we are subjected to hope. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm subjected to hope. Yes, yes, I'm subjected to hope. And we got to be subjected to hope. Because hope, my God, hallelujah, glory to God. And we'll say faith is the evidence of things not seen, right? What, what, how it goes again. Amen. The substance of things not seen uh, to hope for. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so we, when we are subjected to hope, it calls the, the will of God to manifest in our life. But if we don't have hope, one gave a, 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 a parable, was a Chinese parable, I guess. And one gave the parable and says, well, you know, you could, um, uh, you could take everything away from a man. Hallelujah. But don't take his hope away. Amen. Because if he have hope, he can live. He can survive. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He can survive the harshest of time. He can survive a plane crash. He can survive, my God, a sea filled with sharks. Amen. He can survive a wilderness with no food and no water. Hope will cause you to survive the harshness of time. Hallelujah. Because your hope is in expectancy, my God, to a prosperous end, a fulfilling end, my God, a blessed end. Somebody say amen. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered 
from the bondage of corruption in the glorious liberty of the children of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's just what it is. We are the creature of God. We are, the, we are made in the likeness and image of God. But God is saying that we are going to be, hallelujah, glory to God, the creature itself also shall be delivered. Delivered from bondage. God says in his word that you and I will be delivered from every bondage, from every shackle, from everything that is holding our life to the true destiny of God's kingdom and God's word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You, we're going to be liberated in the, as children of God. That's what it is. Because we are children of God and we ought to be liberated. And verse 22 says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And verse 23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even our self grown within ourself, waiting, my God, for the adaption is the wet, the redemption of the body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is that is sin is not hope. No, it's not. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for it? Amen. So hope is not seeing Mandabasha. not what you see but hope glory to God is that what you can't see in the unseen realms that hope my fellow believers is going to determine if you live to see tomorrow or not you got to refuse to let go of your hope in Jesus Christ but if we hope that we see not then do we with patient wait for it. Likewise the Spirit help us our infirmity. For we know not what we shall pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. With groaning that cannot be uttered. It's the Spirit that helps us. It's the Spirit that will pray through us it's the spirit that will present our need in the presence of God hallelujah glory to God because sometimes your pain is so deep the prayer is so far the weight is so heavy the trial is so barren all you can do in your midnight hour is groan Grown because God, you know my heart. God, you know the bills I have to pay. God, you know the struggles I'm facing in my body. God, you know what my children is going through. God, you know the circumstance that's before me. You know the decisions that I have to make. And all you can do sometime is, is groan, groan within, with your eyes filled with tears, saying, God, when will it be my time? God, when will it be my season? God, when will it be my moment? God, when will my prayer be answered? And God is saying that when you don't even have the strength to cry out to me, just groan. That groaning you feel inside that you don't even know why you're groaning to God. It is the spirit that's working in you and not the strength and the weakness of your flesh. Ah, the Spirit will put you in a place with the Almighty God where you feel broken in your heart, tender in your spirit, lost in your mind, saying, God, I surrender to you. Oh, God, help me, Jesus, help me. Ah, you're going through what you're going through because God wants to bless you. You're going through what you're going through because God wants to help you. You're going through what you're going through because God is weighing, my God, your struggle, my God, to your destiny. And your destiny is greater than the pain of your suffering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I shared and I says 
the word of the Lord says that we are pilgrims. In other words, we are pilgriming through a foreign land. A place that's not our own. But a place of which we are pilgriming through each and every passing day to meet our Savior. This pilgrimage at times put us in a stumbling block position. It, we have pits and fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have heights, my God, and low points where we weep and cry. But in this paradoxical place, God is saying, I'm only taking you through. Greater is about to come in your life this day if you would believe on my ways. A few more verses. 28 says, I know that in all things, Work it together for our good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his pure purpose. Hallelujah. I know all things are working for our good. Hey family, I'm just so really excited about that message. It came forth with power, healing strength, and authority in deliverance. And I tell you that there is nothing like when the Holy Ghost moves. And that's why today I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to get this message, receive this message, call our ministry number, receive this message. And a matter of fact, I have this awesome book, My God, Money and Kingdom Principle. I want to get this book to you for any donation that you give to our ministry. I'm just really excited about God's plan. And I know that you, you, you had stayed tuned to this message because it spoke to a specific area in your life of which God desired a bill. So, my fellow believers, don't let anything get in the way of God's plan for your life because what he intends to do for you is far more greater than any trial, any circumstances, any uh, uh, pressure that you may go through. But deliverance and healing and miracles are going to take place. And, Father, I decree supernatural manifestation over the life of your people right now as every demonic yoke are destroyed right now. In Jesus' name, and I loose you from every bondage. I want to release this book, Money and Kingdom Principle. Amen. I want you to stretch forth your hand and sow a seed into our ministry. And as you do so, whatever a sizable gift, over $20, I, I tell you, I just see God working a miracle on your behalf. I see somebody in the spirit that need a healing. God is healing you right now. God is giving you a supernatural breakthrough right now. Somebody that's trying to get into a house and you've been saying, Lord, I just need you to come through for me. I see God doing it for you. Supernatural miracle. You receive your breakthrough right now. Divine manifestation. Call the ministry number that you see on the screen. And I tell you that your life will never be the same again. Thank you so much for watching. Continue to tune in and follow us. God bless you.